I am running the mini marathon. And as you can see, it's a little perforated here, so the heat gets up. The reason I have decided to do this is because it's one of my uh, things on my bucket list, and I've always been a um, outdoors person, a physical type of activity person, so this is just one thing that um, I wanted to do. I used to dress in layers. I used to have on three and four pairs of pants, you know, two jackets, a sweatshirt, and I found that it kind of slowed me down. So I tried to, to uh, take, take off some of the layers, but then I got really cold, so this will enable me to properly dress. When it comes to running, the first thing you get gear-wise is your running shoe. That's the first most important thing is getting in the right shoe because if you don't get in the right type of support system then what happens is you can end up getting injured. For running in the winter, especially in the cold temperatures that we're really starting to get into, there's two things you need to protect yourself from. The first thing is going to be moisture and then the other thing you need to protect yourself from is going to be the wind and that may be a lightweight jacket to put over or even a running vest and the key is to keep your torso warm. I have never had a physical before any kind of exercise program. This will be my first one and I'm really excited. I've experienced a little um, left knee pain, um, but I believe that was because of uh, improper shoes. So you should see a sports medicine physician if you have any type of injury to any type of muscle or joint. So your shoulder, elbow, knee, hip, any of those, um, especially if they've been persistent and it's something that hasn't resolved on its own. And maybe you've tried those different types of treatments such as anti-inflammatories, um, stretches on your own and it hasn't gotten better, that would be a great time for you to seek further treatment by a sports medicine specialist. Extend that arm, arms up overhead, and go ahead and do that squat for me. Um, this test will help me on my technique. Yeah. And ironically, some of the things that he told me that I could work on um, coincided with what Dr. Curry had told me that I could work on in terms of my core and balance and things like that that will help me on my run. I think I did it again. The FMS screen is designed to try and tease out some of those flaws that may be there uh, and allow us to assess and try to get somebody to be able to uh, take a look at what they're doing and break it down into a series of movements and say this is where they may struggle and this may need help to be able to fix it. And it's so new to me, I have absolutely, I mean I'm totally lost in that area. I want to know if what I've been doing is right and really there's so much controversy and so many different opinions on what's good for you and what's bad for you. I'd kind of like to get a professional opinion. Before the run, especially for endurance, we want to make sure that we have enough carbohydrates. I always recommend a full meal at least two to four hours before you actually start your run, and then a very small carbohydrate-filled snack, maybe about 45, 30 minutes before. That could be pretzels, graham crackers, something very simple, easy kind of carbohydrates, or even a banana or an apple. During the run, we want to make sure that we're fueling a run that's longer than 60 minutes. We want to try to start having some kind of gels, goos, some kind of carbohydrate that's easily digestible. After a long run is the most important part is recovery. Making sure that you have some sort of fluid in that recovery meal or snack, some sort of carbohydrate and protein in that recovery snack like chocolate milk.